those who are those who are linked at this very moment at noon at 12 o'clock and during my class session uh, will take part uh, are most welcome to my class uh, today i will conduct my class on punctuation and for the facility of taking students to the page of the text in order to make the class meaningful i want to turn my camera to the page of the laptop so thank you very much please give me pause give me some time to take preparation i request the one who is already in the i request the ones who are already in my class to tell whether you are listening to me clearly and whether you are or you can watch the page on my laptop clearly please write comments about your observation please write comments about your observation if you hear me clearly please if you hear me clearly and if you see the page on my laptop clearly please tell me please write comments please write comments thank thank you very much uh, sagib rahman uh, you are most welcome you are warmly welcome to my online class punctuation we know it very well that punctuality in life is essential to make our life meaningful and disciplined without a maintaining punctuality or a discipline in our life we cannot claim to have or enjoy a good life or a disciplined life with meanings in practical sense just like the importance of punctuality in our life actually punctuation or punctuation marks in writing or in a language is essential if you want to make our writing meaningful in fact like all other languages the english language has a system of sweet symbols and signs this system is known as punctuation punctuation shows us how to structure sentences and how each sentence should be read it means that english sentence had a has a particular specific uh, way of arrangement of the words words are particularly arranged in the sentence in a disciplined way and if we cannot make the or maintain the discipline of the words to be arranged in the sentence the meaning of the sentence may go wrong that means the meaning of the sentence may not be as we intend to that is why punctuation is also very much important in any language especially when we are writing a paragraph or an essay or anything like an article maintaining punctuation or punctuation marks in the proper and right way is quite important and how important to maintain punctuation in the language is very much clear in the examples
they will say examples have been given in order number one example a number the group consists of five year old children you see here we have put two hyphen between five year and old and just using this two hyphen we have meant that a number of children who are five years old there are a number of children and the number of the children are not specified but the age is specified by using the hyphen five hyphen year hyphen old in bangla you can understand pass pass bosor boyoshir kichu shongkhok chhele me but the next example will make you to the clarification about the importance of using punctuation in in any sentence the group consisted of five year old children you see you watch you notice there is only one hyphen between year old so year old means one year old so this sentence mean there are five one year old children in the group so this is very very important to notice the importance of using punctuation in english sentences so when we cannot maintain correct proper punctuation in what to write the right about the article actually becomes meaningless or fail to give the meanings that we intend to and you please notice example number c king frederick says voltaire is an s here in the sentence it's very clear voltaire is an s but the next sentence you see king frederick says voltaire is an s just putting two commas in the in the beginning and at the end that the before and after says voltaire king frederick has become s not voltaire so example number c we see voltaire is an s but in example number d we see king frederick is an s so just you try to notice the importance of using punctuation in the proper way in the right way please try to understand and number e you see he has a brother who works in the ministry that means he has only one brother and his brother works in the ministry it's very clear but the next example tells us that he has a brother who works in the ministry then he might have more than one brother but one brother actually works in the ministry so just you see using a comma we can mean two meanings we can refer to two meanings through a single typed sentence you try to understand and example number g you try to understand what is the importance of using punctuality these are my friends these people are my friends so there is no any you see apostrophe the next in the next example you see there is an apostrophe at the end of the last word friends these are my friends that means these things belong to my friends ei jinis gulo amar bondhu but to the example z we mean that these people are my friends so it's very important to maintain correct uh, proper punctuation marks in the sentences and now we'll come down to the types of punctuation basically according to the place or position where the punctuation marks are used or placed they fall 
into three places according to the place or position they are placed. You see, punctuation are placed at the end of a sentence and then these punctuations are called end or terminal punctuations. And these terminal or end punctuations include, you see, three punctuation marks. Full stop or period. British people say full stop. But American say period. But the thing is same. And number B, question mark also comes at the end of the sentence. And then exclamation marks, it also comes at the end of the sentence. So these three punctuation marks comes, come at the end of the sentence. That is why they are termed so end or terminal punctuation. And then the second classification, second class, internal punctuation. So, internal punctuation refers to the punctuations that are used inside the sentence. When we put punctuations inside the sen uh, sentences, we call it internal punctuation. And they include a semicolon, colon, dash, comma, quotation or a speech mark. And the third one, word punctuation that means these punctuations are used in or with words or inside words that is why they are called so and these include capitals or capitalizations for example do you agree with the proposal not me absurd so there are three sentences in the bracket you see do you agree with the proposal so the beginning word do you see the first letter is D. This is capitalization, we know. The first letter of the sentence should be capital. You see, not me, not, you see here, N is in the capital. Absurd is also A is in the capital. And then you go apostrophe. Apostrophe, you know, apostrophe refers to some abstraction, contraction. Apostrophe refers to contraction of words. Can't. Renounce. Can't means cannot. Renounce, renounce means belongs to Rena. And then hyphen. Hyphen is also used between two words. It may be different types. Uh, for example, you see, self-defense pro-Bangladeshi, anti-socialism. And the rules of using punctuations, that means in which way or how we have to use different punctuation marks in the sentences or in the words at the end. And first of all, we will go for end punctuation, that means the uh, punctuation that are placed at the end of the sentences and we also come have also come to know uh, about three uh, punctuation marks full stop uh, question mark and then exclamation mark so first of all full stop you try to understand from the you try to understand please from the description or the points, description given in points, full stop is used at the end of a declarative or assertive or an imperative sentence. We know it very well. The every declarative or assertive or imperative sentence ends with a full stop or period. And B number use, often we use full stop after abbreviations like easy, IE, easy as for example, E that is, etc. So you try to understand the use of full stop in the abbreviations, that means short form of the words. But there are some exceptions. Exception one, you see, we don't put any full stop in or 
with BBC, CIA, UN, PM, VIP, etc. And you try to understand that all these abbreviations are the first letter of the words that have been shortened. BBC, you know, British Broadcasting Centre Corporation, British Broadcasting Corporation. So, all the fast data have been taken into a short form. And so, the feature of the exception is that these abbreviations are, uh, these, these abbreviations consist of the capital letters. For the beginning of each word that have been abbreviated. So, abbreviations consisting entirely of capital letters. And then exception two, Mr. Dr. A.M. P.M. M.B.B.S. M.A. Uh, this is the British trend. British don't like to use or don't like to put full stop in the abbreviations, uh, especially in this context. But American style or tend to use full stop. For example, Mr. Full stop. Doctor. Full stop. A. Full stop. M. P. Full stop. M. You have to understand. M. Full stop. B. Full stop. B. Full stop. S. Full stop. M. Full stop. A. Full stop. This is American trend. Anyway, you see or you try to understand that uh, here. Americans use small letters in AM and PM, but British use capital AM and PM, and British don't like to use or put full stop. And the next use you, you try to understand, full stop is used when the capital letter in the abbreviation when the abbreviation doesn't stand for a complete word, for example, TV, you see, TV comes from tuberculosis, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis uh, has given to TB. So TB, you see, is in the capital. But this T and B doesn't come from the entire word tuberculosis. Similarly, TV doesn't come from television entirely. Television is a single complete word. But there are two letters, T, V and capital. So this is the trend of not using any full stop here. And MS, you know, manuscript. You see here, manuscript, it's a complete word, manuscript. And the abbreviation is MS. There is no any full stop. And the next uh, uh, rule is uh, full stop is using acronyms. Acronyms are the words, shortened words, that are made by abbreviation, but pronounced as a single word. Like NATO, you know, we don't say N-A-T-O, but we say NATO. It's a word, pronounced a word, NATO, but NATO has come from North Atlantic TT Organization, UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, NASA, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, etc. CAT, VAT, GAT, Laser, AIDS, etc. are some other examples. So you see, all these abbreviated form of the words actually are pronounced as a single word, but the letters used in the abbreviation have come from different complete words. So we don't put any full stop or period here. That means in or inside or at the end, NATO, say UNESCO, say NASA, we don't use any full stop. So uh, these are the rules 
of using full stop. These are the rules of using full stop. I think you have come to know, to understand. So we, I am mean, again telling, telling you the rules of using full stop at the end of a declarative or imperative sentence uh, in the abbreviations like this. But there are exceptions like BBC, CIA, UN, etc. And these abbreviations you see are in the capital letter and they have their meanings. But there are American and British trend to use full stop and not to use full stop in the abbreviations. I have already mentioned and you, I think, have to come to know. And the next uh, is in the abbreviation of TV, TV, etc. And this is to some extent exceptional because these two letters are in the capital and have not come from two individual words. There are two letters coming from a single complete word, TV and TV and MS. So we have to keep all these things in mind very clearly so that we are we do not become confused while writing paragraph or essay or any article. And next we will come to the question mark. And it's I think very important. And there is a single, uh, I think, a single way of using question mark at the end of question. And there are questions that come before us in three ways. There are direct question sentences. So at the end of a direct question, we use question marks. You see here, question mark. But sometimes you see, questions are also made in the speech or quotation. You see here, Moshin said to his mother, what is my pet cat? So it's a question in the, in the speech mark or quotation mark. We also used question mark when we make tag question in a sentence, just like this. If you saw the car, car knocking down the man, didn't you? So the tag you see, didn't you? So these are the three places where we use Christian marks. And then come to exclamation marks. It's very important. Except there are two places, two ways we use exclamation marks or not of exclamation. We use exclamation mark after an emotional expression like hurrah, bravo, what a delightful party it was. And we also use exclamation mark after an emphatic interjection or one word exclamation like ah, alas, help, thieves, oh, whoa. So when there are one word exclamation or interjections, we usually pronounce these words with the greatest stress. Ah, alas, help, thieves, oh. But when our tone comes down, we do not use exclamation marks. For example, oh, Whoa, if you startled me, if the degree of emotion is more, but, oh, if you startled me, okay, the degree of emotion is less than the earlier sentence. And then we'll go down to internal punctuation. We have completed end or a terminal punctuation, now we have come to internal punctuation that is used inside the sentences. And the first of all of the internal punctuation is semicolon. Semicolon is quite critical while using in the sentences. 
and if we fail to use semicolon it will be better for us avoid semicolon and we will go for independent sentences because semicolons are always used between independent clauses i am repeating semicolons are used semicolons are always used between two independent clauses never between an independent or an uh, or a dependent clause no never always between two independent clauses anyway uh semicolon is simply used to separate two or more main clauses main clause that independent clause if they are closely connected in meaning that means we will use or put semicolon when the two clauses of a sentence maintain or relate to each other very closely in meaning or in context when the two clauses of a sentence maintain very close relation very close relation in the context of meaning that means there is a good flow of context good flow of meaning between the two clauses then we must use or we may use semicolon for example the sun shone we went out for a picnic you don't understand the sun shone the circumstances of the of both the clauses are very similar or each of the two clauses actually supplement each other the context the sun shone as the sun shone as the sky was clear there there was no any cloud we went out for a picnic if there was cloud if it, if it was rainy day we could not or we did not go out for a picnic so you see both the clauses supplement each other especially the context and the meaning that means context and meaning actually flow between the two clauses and then uh, number b more usually used before a conjunctive adverb there are some adverbs that are used before a clause specially in the middle just like conjunction that means they have their adverbial meaning that contribute to the meaning of the clause as well as that you just like a conjunction that is why they conjunctive adverb so used before a conjunctive adverb which makes the relationship between the two main clauses even more plain the same thing that means both the clauses actually supplement each other in meaning in context that means the meanings and the context are quite close there is a flow of context flow of meaning between the two clauses so it's very important anyway you try to understand the example the sun shone the same sentence i have written here so that you can understand clearly the sun shone consequently we we went out for a picnic consequently so consequently is a conjunct conjunctive adverb and we have used a semicolon before the conjunctive adverb but avoiding using this conjunctive adverb if if we if we would use another word just like so and or these are called uh coordinate conjunctions if we use if we would use uh, say coordinate uh, adverbs coordinate conjunctions i am sorry coordinate uh, conjunctions then Uh, we could not use, or we did, or did not use, or we don't use, uh, say semicolon. Then we had to use comma. So as there is a conjunctive adverb, there is semicolon. But if instead of conjunctive adverb, we 
used uh, set coordinate conjunction conjunction then we would use comma in the place of semicolon in third use you see is used to separate semicolon is used to separate items in a list which are more than one in number and only have commas i think it will come to be very much clear from the example you try to understand the example on the table wire on the table wire knives knives is a single word you see knives single word and after this it's a list list of things it's a list of things a number of things are in the list please try to understand there are a number of things in the in a list and the first thing is knives a single word and you see here there is comma there is comma so after knives we have used comma but after knives there are two items of things joined by a conjunction and forks and spoons cups and saucers plates and bowls and glasses of all of of all kinds and now you notice that we have used semicolon after forks and spoons after cups and saucers after plates and bowls and as the last item has been added using and at the end we have used a full stop but we have used after each and every say two items joined by and we have used used semicolon so it's very important to notice i am repeating this please try to understand on the table were knives on the table were knives knives is single word single item on the list or of the list it's a single item that is why there is a comma but all the next items mentioned not singly but plurally not in single but in plural forks and spoons cups and saucers plates and bowls and glasses of all kinds so it's very important to understand so one thing is very important with uh, so uh, use of use of semicolon is very important here and there is a note to notice for you i have already mentioned about it if the two main clauses are joined by coordinate conjunction instead of conjunctive adverb if we use a coordinate conjunction in the place of a conjunctive adverb between the clauses we must put a comma not a semicolon and notice the example he fell ill suddenly so he did not go to work but if we use if we used he fell ill suddenly fell ill suddenly consequently he did not go to work then we had to write had to put semicolon in the in the place of comma so it's very important so and i have given a list of the coordinate conjunctions please try to understand try to try to understand and there is a list i have given a list of coordinate conjunctions for and nor but or yet and so there are seven there are seven as many as seven coordinate conjunctions so if we use a coordinate con uh, conjunctions between two clauses that support that supplement is other in the context of meaning and there is a flow of ideas flow of thoughts between the two sentences we must not use we must not use semicolon we must use comma when